Orchard Park, the new stadium, the new home of the Buffalo Bills. More than 600 men and machines labor to complete the new facility in time for the 73 Buffalo Bills football season. A season that will see Plunkett of the Patriots, the Super Bowl champion Miami Dolphins, the contending New York Jets with Namath, and a rebuilding Baltimore club. Just a few of the tough NFL teams the Bills will face. Bob Lustig, vice president and general manager of the Bills, has said the new stadium is the finest facility in the league, with the comfort of the fan being the most important consideration. Eighty thousand seats, and all with an unobstructed view of the AstroTurf field, no matter where you sit. Sixty-eight hundred chair-style seats fill the club level section. The club level also contains thirty-four private suites, glass enclosed, climate controlled, carpeted, paneled, and equipped with color TV. Thirty-eight concession stands fill the concourse and will serve a variety of quality food and beverages for the pleasure of the fan. More than 370,000 cubic feet of shale has been removed from the site to bring the playing field 50 feet below ground level. The new stadium rises no more than 60 feet above the horizon. The facilities building, located in the end zone, houses the dressing rooms, administrative offices, the Buffalo Bills Hall of Fame, and the stadium club. The Buffalo and Suburban fan will find himself minutes from the stadium via access roads like Route 5, Route 20, Mile Strip Road, Abbott Road, and Big Tree Road. Rochester, Erie, and all Western New York fans alike will find the New York Thruway quick and convenient on their way to the spacious parking lots designed to hold more than 15,000 cars and 300 buses. In April 1972, Orchard Park and Erie County officials joined with Ralph Wilson, Jr., owner of the Bills, to break ground for the new stadium. A mild winter and the continuous dedication of the men on the construction teams have brought the stadium to this point of construction. The newest and most modern facility in the National Football League will bring the thrills of professional football to 80,000 fans every Sunday afternoon. Your seat in the stadium is waiting for you. The Bills know that and they know that you'll like what you see. So we have news out of Buffalo, New York, where the Pagula family want the Buffalo Bills' new stadium to be 100% paid for by taxpayers. Yes, the Pagulas want $1.5 billion for the new Bills' stadium and renovation costs for the arena downtown where the Buffalo Sabres play. And again, this proposal asks for the full cost of the new Bill Stadium to be covered by public funds. Now this is something. I'm the only one who's probably gonna say this and I'll get tons of hate for it, but these are the facts. A multi-billion dollar company, the NFL and the Buffalo Bills, is going to take $850 million from the taxpayers of New York State to build a stadium. A stadium in Orchard Park, which their own studies say is a bad idea, which the NAACP has said is a bad idea and hurts the city of Buffalo. No one seems to care. Beyond that, there are massive conflicts of interest that no one cares about and no one's talking about because the risk of losing the bills is too great. Which makes me wonder why we just, I mean, what, what, what's the limit here? I mean, how much would we have given them if they asked? Uh, let's go right to the story here. So, this is the New York Times. The Buffalo Bills struck a deal for a taxpayer-funded $1.4 billion stadium. Um, New York State officials have reached a deal, Buffalo Bills, to use $850 million. That's a lot of money. And taxpayer funds to build a $1.4 billion stadium. The largest taxpayer contribution ever for a pro football facility. Now remember, we are in a democratic majority state super majority and we're supposed to be the party about you know the little guy 
and we're going to give $850 million in public funds to a family, the Pagulas, that made billions of dollars fracking across the Northeast. It's crazy. And you can spin it any way you want, but it's crazy. And maybe it will hurt me and hurt my political career for saying it, but so be it. Or maybe no one cares. But I think 30 years from now, they will care. So under the deal, the state would finance $600 million in construction costs. Erie County, Erie County, by the way, which has uh, almost a 14% poverty rate, the the... It's above the national average. We have the worst job market in the country. Worse than places like Mississippi or Alabama. We're going to fund $250 million of taxpayer money for a stadium in the suburbs. In the white suburbs. That the NAACP is against. That the Pagula, the owners of the bills, own reports that's a bad idea. Bad idea for the city, not for them. For them, it's a great, great deal because they get this facility they control and dominate in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, cut off from any other competing uh, restaurants or uh, 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 any type of, of hospitality venue whatsoever. They control it. Whole nine yards. Um, the announcement came after months of secretive backroom deals among government um, among Ka- Governor Kathy Hochul county officials and team owners now here we are in western new york and because the bills are so popular everybody's losing their mind on how happy they are and trust me they will be out there with glowing ready to go happy shiny as they cut the ribbon for the stadium in orchard park which is really just an upgraded version of the old stadium they had uh, which doesn't have a dome which means we'll never have a super bowl in buffalo um it it, it's not great for concerts. In fact, the old stadium, which is a lot like the new stadium, has only had, less I think, less than 30 concerts in its entire history. I mean, almost no concerts because it's not a good facility for concerts, most concert venues, unless you're the Rolling Stones or some act like that, which very few acts like that exist today. So you have a facility that is exclusively only a football facility that will be used a dozen times a year, only for the purpose of football and for the enrichment of a family that is already worth doing. Now, let's keep reading here. Uh, let's move forward to the end here. Because this is some, there's some funny stuff in here. Say you're going to spend $850 million to get... Uh, wait, wait, let me back up. Julie Wood, spokesman for the governor, said the state portion be funded through a mix of new and existing capital appropriations. Meanwhile, Kathy Hochul's budget is cutting $800 million, I kid you not, the same figure, from children and family services for New York State. So here we have a Democratic, supposedly Democratic governor, who is again pandering to right-wing policies and pandering to what's popular in the moment, rather than having a strategic long-term vision. The subsidy is bound to make the already fraught state budget negotiations even more contentious, with some left-wing Democrats from the downstate region already denouncing the public funding as corporate welfare. Well, of course it's corporate welfare. There's no study that says this kind of funding for these big stadiums helps anybody but the owners. And we've seen it fail over and over again across the country, but Buffalo always seems to be a little bit behind. So we're going to do it again. Every dollar that goes in the stadium will be paid back, said Ron Rakula, the executive vice president of Pagula Sports and Entertainment, which owns the team. How, Ron? How? There's no evidence of that whatsoever. Zero evidence that anything's going to be paid back. But nonetheless, they're going to do it. I can read. Keep going with this, but I I won't. I'm just going to go into my own thoughts on it. I'm not even against public funding. Public funding for a facility that only serves this family. Well, two families. I used to work for Delaware North. I did not do casino work for them. I worked mostly um, in the airport field and a little bit in the sports field. So I know this field pretty well and what they're trying to do. They're trying to create a controlled environment. Now, why do I bring Delaware North up? They operate the Bills Stadium. Yeah, they operate the stadium. They make millions and millions and millions of dollars off the stadium. Now, they might lose that contract. But I doubt it, especially when 
the general counsel, the top lawyer at Delaware North, is Kathy Hochul, our governor's husband. Now, I know I'm not supposed to talk about this, and every time I do, people say, who cares what her husband does? Well, I care. I mean, it matters. The you know ethics laws have been written to prevent this type of behavior, and to her by say her saying, "Well, I'm not going to listen to him. We're not going to talk about this." It's about as credible as Ginny Thomas saying, "I'm not going to talk with Clarence Thomas about what's happening on January 6." These things matter, and here she is giving away a record amount of taxpayer money to a company, to a to a corporation that is directly benefited from that money normalized corruption that's occurring in New York State and our country. Now, I never took a dollar of corporate money. I raised millions of dollars, thankfully, because of you people out there, how kind you were to help support my grassroots campaign. I worked for this company. I didn't take a dollar from them. Kathy Hochul cannot say the same thing. No one from the Jacobs family owns Delaware North or the Pagulas gave me a dollar. If they did, correct me. Go look at the files. I didn't take any money from them even when they wanted to give it, nor did I take any money from any corporation, which wasn't easy. It's nearly impossible in modern politics. Not the same for Ms. Hochul, who's taking millions and millions of dollars from corporate entities, including the casino lobby, which is directly connected to, again, to Bill Hochul. Hey, in poverty-stricken Buffalo, yes, poverty-stricken because that's what the national census numbers tell us. It has a 13.5% poverty rate, which is far above the national average. They had this multi-million dollar fundraising event for Donald Trump at Delaware North's headquarters. Again, Bill Hochul is the top lawyer for Delaware North, uh, the, hus- the husband of our governor. And, and uh, they're right at the center of this deal for the Bills. That's where Buffalo Bills and Sabres owner Terry Pagula is back in the fracking business. He now owns a company that drills in Potter County, an area that gets its news from the Buffalo media area, including two on your side. Jim Heaney's extensive research shows that Pagula's company is helping the local economy, but are also regularly cited for environmental violations. Jim explains in this original report. Terry Pagula made his fortune by drilling for natural gas in Pennsylvania. He pocketed more than $3 billion when he sold the lion's share of his main company in 2010. He's reinvested a good chunk of that change in Buffalo, buying the Sabres and then the Bills, and building Harbor Center with the help of taxpayer subsidies. When he bought the Sabres in 2011, he made it clear that he was in it for the sport, not the profit. If I want to make some money, I'll go drill a gas well. And drill other wells, he has. Pagula started another fracking company, JKLM Energy, and began drilling wells in 2015 in north central Pennsylvania, about two and a half hours southeast of Buffalo. The fracking company Pagula previously owned was frequently cited for regulatory violations. An analysis by the Pennsylvania Land Trust Association found that his East Resources Management ranked third worst among some 45 drillers cited by inspectors for violations between 2008 and August 2010. Pennsylvania public records show that nothing much has changed with Pagula's new operation. Companies with larger operations were cited for more violations, but a report issued last spring found that JKLM Energy had more violations per active well than any operator in the state. And the second worst offender wasn't even close. The report by Penn Environment, a watchdog group critical of fracking, had this to say about JKLM Energy. The company has had repeated problems properly constructing and operating wells and was cited for polluting water, including groundwater contamination. My own review of state enforcement records found that inspectors cited JKLM Energy for regulatory violations during each of its 20 inspections conducted since 2015. The state has slapped JKLM with more than a half million dollars in fines, most of them involving violations at the Reese Hollow drilling site in 2015. State records show the violations included contamination of the drinking water supplies of nearby residents. The drilling site 
is now a band. As a result, Pagula's operation has its share of critics in the Cowdersport area. How responsible do you think the company has been? Not very. <laughs> I, I would sum it up as very irresponsible. State regulators aren't the only ones keeping an eye on Pagula's operation. Law enforcement agents of the Iroquois Confederacy have been investigating JKLM since December. We're in the woods. We're in the rivers. The chief marshal said his team has observed activity by JKLM or some contractors that he believes represent violations of both state regulations and treaty rights. His marshals are continuing their investigation, and Snow said the Iroquois will consider taking legal action in federal or Native American courts if necessary. What do Pagola or other company officials have to say? Absolutely nothing. Over the past several weeks, I've repeatedly called and emailed a half a dozen people associated with JKLM or Pagula's business ventures here in Buffalo. None were willing to talk. I finally asked a spokesman here in Buffalo for an on-camera interview with Pagula. He never responded to my request. If you continue your irresponsible behavior with these very dangerous chemicals, and threaten the future generations of not only our people, but your own people, we will be there waiting for you.